Hello friends, Techman Pat here. Today we're going to do a quick tutorial on how to upgrade the storage space on your ROG Ally. And we've got two options. One is a little bit scary, the other one is a straight swap. So what you're going to need today, of course, is a hard drive. Now I've chosen the MP600 Mini from Corsair. Links below to PLE where you can buy this right now. It's about 150 Australian dollars. It's one terabyte and it's an exact size and swap for the hard drive inside here. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to clone this so there's no downtime for you to have to reinstall everything on your ROG Ally. And of course, you can straight swap it and have that extended room to download more games. Furthermore, I have a second option that we're going to do, and that is we're gonna utilize one of these. This is a crucial two terabyte M.2 SSD. And as you can see, it's a completely different size than and the MP600 right here. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this little adapter right here. It's a 90 degree adapter from eBay. Again, links below, which allows us to fit this M.2 SSD into the ROG Ally. Now, why is this a concern? Well, it's a little bit larger and it sits quite close to the heatsink of the CPU of the ROG Ally. Now, I did some testing with this in and I didn't find any problems, but maybe somewhere out there, someone might find a problem. In any case, we're gonna show you how to clone and install two types of drives into the ROG Ally. And of course, make sure to like and subscribe. Let's get started by rolling the intro. Okay, let's talk about the cloning process. If you have a Crucial drive, you can use their provided Crucial cloning software. It's very good, it's very easy to use, it's literally one click. If you don't have a Crucial drive, you won't be able to use it due to the licensing issues. You can purchase it, of course. However, there is another application that I'll be talking about that has a 30-day trial. But the major part that you really need is an M.2 enclosure. This one right here is a USB-C enclosure that fits the largest M.2 drive. And what this allows me to do is plug it into the ROG Ally via USB-C and directly clone the M.2 drive in there onto the drive that's right here. Lastly, and again, I'm gonna remind people a few times, you need to turn off BitLocker on your Windows 11 installation on ROG, and I'll show you that in a second. So let's jump into the ROG and see what we have to do. Links below for the software to clone. It's called Reflect 8 by Macronium Software. It has a 30-day trial when using your own email. After that, you will have to pay. If you're doing this only once, the 30-day trial will be enough. Let's start with the MP600 Mini. It is super, super small, which is awesome. And of course, it means it can fit into such a compact device. So let's put it into the M.2 external enclosure and start the process. The first thing you need to do is activate the drive through your partition and hard drive management console inside Windows 11. Just press start type in create and format hard disk partitions. You will then see disk three at the bottom in black, then right click and select new volume and assign a drive letter. Then if you haven't already done so, let's turn off BitLocker. Press start and type in device encryption. You will then see a blue tick box that you need to untick. The process can take up to 30 minutes as it unencrypts your entire drive. Do not clone before doing this step. Okay, let's get started on cloning. Open up Reflect 8 and you will see there your main disk, disk one, and there's a button underneath called clone this disk. Once you select clone this disk, you'll be given an option to select a disk to clone to. This is your destination disk. Now select the drive that we are cloning to. Press erase disk. And now you're going to drag every single partition from your main drive onto the blank spaces on the destination drive. However, make sure to leave the OS or C or primary NTFS partition till last. Finally, since the destination drive is bigger than the original drive, you will see a lot of blank space. Select your OS partition and tap the fill space button. Click next and follow through the wizard until it asks you, are you sure? Press continue and let the process run. This should only take about 40 minutes to an hour. Okay, time to take the ROG Ally apart, or at least take off the back cover. 
First things first, if you haven't already, make sure to turn the ROG off completely by selecting shut down via the start menu. There are six screws on the back and some of them are quite lengthy. So you'll uh, be turning them for a little while. Once you've taken off the back cover, the M.2 drive is located behind the black sticker in the middle. But before we charge anything, make sure to unplug the battery power that's sitting there in the center with a little colored cables. Once all removed, you can now remove the existing M.2 drive. And it's just a little screw that's holding it down. First, we're going to test out the large M.2 SSD and we're gonna throw in the 90 degree adapter. It'll screw down where the old screw hole was and we'll just throw it in just like we would with any other M.2 drive. Plug the battery back in, put the cover back on. You can screw it down if you wish to and boot up your ROG Ally. The first boot process might take a little bit longer than normal, but once you're in, you'll be able to see your two terabyte about drive or whatever drive size you've actually inserted. Now let's put the MP600 mini in and it, again, it's the same process. Unscrew, remove, and there we have it. Our clone drives are ready to go. So there you have it, folks. We've got an upgraded ROG Ally at a pretty reasonable price. And of course, we can extend it beyond the one terabyte price limit, as I call it, for these mini M.2 SSDs. In any case, I would suggest just using the smaller one, but if you feel brave and you have no worries about overcooking your SSD, then the other one will probably work fine too. I used it for about a day and I saw no issues. I don't know how it's going to go in the long term, let's say one, two, three, four, five, six months, but I think it would be fine since the drives aren't actually touching the heat pipe. So friends, thank you very much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and we'll catch you all in another video. Bye.